energizing. So this evening, we wish to speak with you about the, oh, hmm. forgive us, we will use, there are no adequate words for us within our grasp of this. So we will say, we will speak with you about the manipulation of time, but we do not mean this in the way of manipulate against its will or manipulate in a negative way. We mean manipulate as in allowing something that is losing its essence to reshape and reconform along its natural path. For example, if you have a stream that is flowing, and this stream must by necessity flow to bring water to all the places that expect the water for the fishies and the little crabs and for the animals and the plants. But a tree falls across this river or creek or a boulder, it interrupts the flow and brings harm to the areas that are interrupted, possibly overflows the area that is, thus drowning in one area and dehydrating in another. So you manipulate by removing or reshaping the tree so the river or stream may flow as it is naturally meant to. You may think of this current moment as, as time to be in such a flux that some debris has fallen into your time stream. It is a good time. <laughs> we did not mean to joke, but you have so few words for this concept, which is part of why you remain so linear stuck. You have not enough understanding of the volume of this time concept. So at this moment, there is much debris. Someone has lobbed a grenade into your time stream and there's bric-a-brac getting in, gumming up the works. We would like to teach you how to clean and manipulate the time stream back to the way it should be. You are in a moment in your history where your time, instead of flowing, has become a bubble with many possible avenues coming out of it. Eventually, you will rejoin where you wish and need to be. We know this because we are there calling to you you are in your present, you are in our past. However, by the time you reach our present, you will understand that all of this nonsense of now to later is really just a human construct to dumb down the beauty that is time. So, if you have multiple avenues, but they will all reach here, one returns quickly, another meanders, but we guarantee all reach here. So feel relieved. Your planet will continue. It will evolve. The only question is how much of the current life will be there to enjoy it? We would like the answer to be 
as much as possible. So we are teaching you a technique tonight for you to help make that a reality as opposed to very few still alive, which would be less enjoyable for those who are currently in life. Of course, your souls don't care as much because if you die now, you can come back again later. But if you are in life, you may be fond of this existence and not wish to give it up so quick. So, is there a question? Yes. Um, can you give us some examples of what kinds of things uh, block time like this? Yes, in your situation, you'll notice whenever your United States people come to a level of cohesion, there are those in government who disrupt it and bring it back to chaos. There are other countries also experiencing this. You will notice there are some countries that are cohesive and remain cohesive. They are doing fairly well now, comparatively. Your country is more interested in conflict than healing. So this conflict is bringing distresses to the timeline that can send you in directions that will dramatically decrease the number of citizens in your nation. Does that make sense to you? Yes, thank you. Imagine if you come together as a harmonious group and you heal from this COVID-19, you heal from the police brutality, you heal from oppressive government, you heal your school systems, your democracy, then many people will benefit very quickly. But if you go forward in acrimony, you will diminish the quality of life here and you will diminish the quantity of life here. You will notice there are times when people begin to come together and there are those who lob the grenades of toxicity into this immediately to make it difficult for the cohesion to occur. You are then dog paddling in a sea of chaos as opposed to swimming in a river of love. Does this make sense? Yes. Yes. So if yes, you- Yes, I, I have a question though. Yes. Um, so to me, time is a, is a absolute or a constant, and I'm sure I'm wrong about that, but that's, so I perceive time as existing independent of me and the government and, and our culture and the changes that you have, that you are discussing to me are, um, actions of individuals and should not be slowing time itself. So I don't understand that difference. So time, think of it as a multiple choice scenario. You are in a situation and you say, if we choose option A, time takes us on this path. If we choose option B, time takes us on this path. Does that make sense? Yes, I think I would think of those paths as 
um, <coughs> excuse me, cultural changes. Imagine, imagine if when you have your peaceful protesters, the government is denied funding to send the troops in to abuse them. So the peaceful protesters are heard and resolution is found between making a police force that is there for the people and the people work with the police force. This would have been a preferred timeline, but as the the military has come and brought such chaos, it has expanded the energy of the timeline that is creating the causality and diminished the amount of time for a peaceful resolution. So it is creating a near future with more chaos and acrimony as opposed to a near future of cohesion. Okay. If um, you hey. Yes. I, I have a question, not so much as to the timelines because I think I understand the multiple choice options and how I think I understand how it works, but I have a question about, is it proper for us to, for example, take coronavirus? Can we, um, I have heard you say that it's Mother Earth's way of saying we have mistreated her. Would it be proper for us to try to, through prayer or through shamanic means, to uh, attack? coronavirus, so to speak? Hmm. This is an excellent question. I would say it is better to appease Mother Earth than to attack her security system. Yes. Now we return to we. So, you know your global climate change, how what happens in an individual's daily life can impact the weather around your planet. Now you have many fires on your planet and great heat. This will not stop and it will cause some very, um, hmm effects that are still reversible but increasingly you must be innovative to reverse it and as you know if each individual person stopped creating garbage and fumes then the earth would never have come to this state the actions of an individual affects your micro environment the actions of your micro environment affect your greater environment and the actions of the greater environment affect the planetary environment, correct? It is the same yes. with time. The action of an individual can indeed affect the time stream for the planet. We tell you, if you wish to heal all of this, think about what is healing for you as an individual and then magnify that to the planet. We tell you if you practice with yourself, love to self, adoration to self, friendship and kindness to self and connect the self to your planet love for your home love for your nature love 
and kindness, it will have as much impact as when you throw your recyclables with garbage and toss it out your window when you drive a car, it is the opposite balance. Of course, the garbage impacts your climate and the love impacts your ambiance and your timeline, but they all connect as they exist in the same space. Does this make sense to you? Yes. We tell you love for self, love for your divine sacred mother is more healing than you can imagine. When you love to a situation or love to a group, it will always have an effect. The more that love, the more you are creating an environment that those others are breathing in. It has an effect. It affects your time stream as well. When you are in a situation where you are fighting with someone, you are creating a timeline filled with acrimony. When you're in a situation where you are adoring with someone, you are creating a time stream filled with kindness. This is so imperative. So now we will teach you a technique if you are ready. Are you ready for a technique or do we have questions first? I have a question. Yes. The thing that pops into my mind is how does the idea of love and vibration correlate? And how does that affect a timeline? And like how long do you have to be, you know, loving or acrimonious for it to alter a timeline? These are excellent questions. We say for how long, the more skilled you are, the more quick it can be. For those who are very skilled, realize in an instant you can give great healing. The more time you put in is to develop your skill and your connection. When you are first learning any craft, you put in great time and practice, but then when you are experienced, you may happen instantaneously. Now, how love and time connect, understand all things are energy. You are very dense energy because your energy that has compacted so much, you are physical. There are many who are real and in existence who are very light energy. They may be one solid molecule surrounded by etheric energy, or they may be purely etheric and not at all physical, but energy all the same. You are an intelligent energy. Yet this chair we sit in is a less intelligent energy. We do not say zero intelligence because we have yet to converse with the chair, so we cannot gauge its intellect. We assume it would not be a clever, witty conversationalist, yet we have not tried, so we will not state. Now, you, each of you, is a very compressed energy with intellect, emotion, and many other wonderful skills. When light etheric energy comes to you, 
it has difficulty getting into you because it is so light, it cannot even make it through your auric emanation, much less into your body, unless you are skilled and invite it in. This is one reason you meditate and open your third eye, open your awareness, open your heart. So you are allowing a lightening of your energy so those who are less physical may come in closer to you. Because you are dense energy, it is easier for you to live in this incredibly physical environment, but more difficult for you to exist in an etheric environment. You think because you are physical and you are linear that this is where reality comes from. You do not understand that you are existing on just one thread of a multidimensional grid that is surrounding you, but you are oblivious to all of that because it is too etheric. Do you understand what we're saying so far? Yes, that's very clarifying. Yes. Thank you. Wonderful. So we are inviting you to become acquainted with the reality, the reality that surrounds you, even if you do not yet comprehend it. We promise you, it is there, just less compacted than you are. We say this, when you practice your energy healing, your Reiki and other work, you are learning to also lighten up your energy. If you are only physical 3D reality, then it's not possible for you to take your hand and put it on a broken bone or a sprained wrist to mend it. But if you include energy and a etheric flowing through you, these things may happen. We are sure that you all have experienced such things in your world. If you think that something is solid, it will always be solid. Yet, as you know, our conduit loves bending silverware to make it into funny sculptures, and she did so with just the lightest press of her fingers. So we know that your 3D reality is only the smallest smudgeon of the actual reality you are in the midst of. You are no more aware of everything that's happening than an ant on a hill. Something to think about. This is why we tell you to speak with trees or birds because their awareness is of such things is much greater than yours. So they can help you to blend in and open, lighten up your senses. So you are in a situation. You are going forward with your time. But as in any path of life, you may find you are tempted to try this way, that way, this way, that way, possibly a do-over. There are many avenues to get from here to there. What we would like to show you is a meditation technique to travel several times.